Who knows about the future, right? That is a question that is uh, unanswerable. The present situation is very clearly one in which the uh, European Union and its member states is on the receiving sides, side of all kinds of negative externalities of developments in the region. This includes um, the refugee challenges to Europe. This includes uh, everything that we um, associate with terrorism and security. This will include very uh, soon, and no one talks about it, but we all know it, um, the new phenomena of climate refugees as a consequence of the um, desertification of large areas within the region. And um, so Europe is in a way um, affected by what is going on in the region. It is not a matter that can be guided by strategic objectives. Uh, we need to cope with the um, three kinds of uh, challenges coming from the region. And Europe is very poorly equipped to do so. Well, we, we try to reflect on that problem and the set of problems and understand what is going on in the region itself, which is very heterogeneous. Um, some states are states, some states are half or quarter or none or failed states. The institutional setup of the um, EU in its present shape on the basis of the treaties, the two Lisbon treaties, is not sufficient to uh, do any cooperative joint uh, policy, and that includes foreign policy. Okay, we have an agrarian policy, we have uh, uh, in various areas uh, uh, regulatory rules, but uh, the EU, Brussels, contrary to what many people feel and believe, is not a government, it is not a state, it is uh, a very poorly uh, equipped policy-making agency with strong limitations deriving from subsidiarity, uh, so-called the S-word, as the British say, uh, subsidiarity, and um, many other uh, limitations, including the common currency without a common social, economic and fiscal policy. So it's a, it's a, it's a, what in German is called a Neubauruine, you know, a, a building that has not been completed, but the construction has been stopped, right? It's an ugly, ugly uh, view to look at a building that is not completed, but the completion takes ever more time and is ever more unlikely to take place because of the deficiencies that become apparent and uh, the, the strong movements toward renationalization that we see in Europe. It's not just foreign policy, but foreign policy is particularly difficult because member states have historical relations to some do, some do not. France has very strong uh, historical relations, so does Britain. Uh, Germany has very limited uh, relations to the, uh, to the uh, region, history-wise. And um, it is not clear how these differences between um, European member states or the major European member states can be bridged. Italy plays a particular role due to to its uh, geographic location, as does Greece, as we all know, with its 3,000 islands. And uh, member states are uh, positioned in a different way vis-a-vis -vis, 
uh, the Middle East and North Africa. Germany has special uh, relations to the state of Israel that others do not have. And so there, there are differences that in uh, practical policy making uh, play a big role and make uh, a, a cooperative, consensual, strategic approach to the region very difficult to achieve. Well, I mean, there's always an, uh, an additional value in having the opportunity to talk to competent, experienced, ambitious uh, people who are invited, some of them very prominent, to uh, address a group of experts and uh, policy makers and students uh, of our school and in cooperation with the LSE and the Mercator Foundation. And I can say that because I have been part of the previous two, uh, Darendorf Symposia, two years ago and four years ago. In both cases, with their specific topics, it was a worthwhile experience and I am confident that this will be the case uh, in the upcoming event, in end of May 2016. Yes, I, I first met him um, uh, as a student when he, in 1959, uh, when he was, was uh, invited to, to give a guest lecture in the introductory sociology course of Professor René König at the Cologne University where I was a student. And uh, the then leading sociologist in Germany, René König said, today you would not hear a word from me. Here is the young, talented, inspiring sociologist who represents the future of German sociology, Ralf Dahrendorf. And then the 31-year-old Ralf Dahrendorf spoke for two hours to the students and was quite I don't remember what he said, but I remember being fascinated.